are several advantages of real-time PCR over conventional PCR. And one of the major advantages is the high sensitivity, and this sensitivity is brought about by the fact that we use very sensitive fluorescent labels. This allows us to detect very low copy targets with greater confidence than we could expect from a conventional PCR. We can detect a very wide dynamic range, so if conditions are right, we can actually detect a single copy in a run, all the way up to 10 to the 11 copies. It's a highly quantitative and accurate, techni accurate technique when it's carried out correctly. We can calculate the absolute copy number in our sample, or we can detect the gene expression fold changes uh, between different samples accurately in real time in contrast to traditional PCR output. And this is because the increase in fluorescence which is captured during the PCR run is directly proportional to the amount of template. And in addition, the closed tube format of a real-time PCR experiment actually further boosts the quantitative and accurate nature because we, re we reduce the risk of cross-contamination that we get when we open our conventional PCR tubes to add in our loading dye and then load our gel, we risk having carryover between samples. This we do not get with real-time PCR. And that is because we don't need to run any agarose gels at the end because all of the quantification, quantification is actually done for us in the software. So it's faster. And it's also safer because we don't need to use ethidium bromide to stain our DNA gels. And we don't need to use the radioactivity that we might have used several years ago to investigate gene expression analysis by northern blotting. So there are many, many advantages. These are the main ones. So when there are so many advantages, it's not surprising then that real-time PCR has many, many vast applications. And to make this a little bit more digestible, I have broken the applications down into different disciplines. So if we look within the medicine and diagnostic discipline, then we can see that real-time PCR can be used for the fast identifications of genes that are associated with disease. So this could be genes which have altered regulation levels, uh, altered expression levels in cancer and in other genetic diseases. Moreover, real-time PCR can be used for the rapid and accurate diagnosis of infectious diseases. And this is, this is in particular very, very uh, powerful in cases where the pathogen that is causing the infectious disease is not so easy culturable in the lab or takes a long time to culture. So by using a rapid technique by real-time PCR, the patients actually get the diagnosis and the correct treatment earlier. In addition, uh, within medicine, real-time PCR can be used to identify new microbial isolates and new viral strains, and this is particularly important in situations of disease outbreaks. Within microbiology, then, real-time PCR is used in the assessment of food safety and food spoilage. It is used to carry out risk assessments for the safety of drinking water and recreational water in the interest of public health. And it is also used in the identification of new microbial species in conjunction with some of the traditional uh, methods for identifying microbial species. Within research, there are many, many broad uses. And I have to say, this is where I would use real-time PCR the most. And that would be to understand biochemical and signaling pathways and also to decipher mechanisms of actions for both new and existing drugs. And then in addition, a very largely growing area of research is microRNA and non-coding RNA research. And real-time PCR has some very good uses there also. And last but not least, uh, within clinical quantification and genotyping, real-time PCR is a very powerful technique. It is used to assess the viral load or the number of viral uh, entities in certain patient groups. For example, patients who, have, who are suffering from chronic uh, diseases such as hepatitis B. It's also used to monitor the HIV load in HIV positive patients and, and also to monitor their response to antiviral therapy. And it is also used to help find new uh, single nucleotide polymorphisms which may be involved in disease. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, please visit bitesizebio.com slash webinars.